We're now going to move away from dry media and we're going to talk about wet media with a focus on painting. There are many different types of paint but the main difference is that most are water-based which means that they, the colors are bound with a binder that dissolves in water. While oil paints have to be cleaned with turpentine or soap as they are bound with oil and as we know oil and water do not mix. Instead of focusing on the properties of these different me uh, wet media, I thought we would rather look at painting in terms of types or styles, as styles are an important way that we're going to be identifying different types of art, especially in future lessons. Before we begin, I thought you might enjoy a little Monty Python. Well, what we learned from that clip is um, A, don't take your children to an art gallery and certainly don't hit them. And B, um, yeah, don't eat paintings, especially very, very expensive ones. Paintings come in a wide range from some of the oldest works which were made by spitting chewed up colored sand onto the artist's own, ha own hands, such as this particular work out of a, a sort of ancient cave wall to work that is contemporary, which means work that's happening in our time, um, and painted with very new materials such as acrylic paints. Acrylic is, as you may know, actually plastic. So acrylic paints are bound with water and have small little colored plastic balls uh, within this water solution that creates the paint. Paintings can be huge, painted on walls, or they can be small and intimate in a gilded frame, such as this one by Frida Kahlo. But we're going to look at paintings in the terms in terms of style. Many artists refer to classical cult culture and arts in their work, uh, especially starting in the Renaissance and all the way up until the pretty much even now, but mainly until the end of the 19th century, classical art was very trendy and in vogue. In the 18th century style called neoclassicism, artists in France exalted what they considered high culture. Roman arches, togas, columns, and Greek and Roman stories predominated in high art, such as this story of the death of Socrates. 
Another style of that era, era is called Romanticism. Although still referencing legendary stories, the approach to line, color, emotion and composition was very different to Neoclassicism that we saw in the slide before. Lines here are curved and sensual, color is rich and it heightens the drama. Coming out of this era of classical themes, the Impressionists were a rebellious group of artists in the late 19th century who approached art in a very different way. Colours are often in the pastel range, short brushstrokes of pure colour give a sense of sunlight and atmosphere, and perhaps most important of all, subject matter was about everyday life rather than of the wealthy and heroic. We're now going to take a look at abstract art, which is very much the child of modern art, which began the end of the 19th century. Abstract art often confuses people, but what abstract art is, is it's art that the artist has manipulated in some way so that it doesn't look like reality. It may be of an image that you recognize, such as the Cezanne, where we can tell that it's a mountain with trees in the foreground, um, as well as this Van Gogh, where he's abstracted the village and the sky. Let's be honest, the sky does not look like this, but we still know what we're looking at. And then abstraction can go to the other extreme, where we really cannot identify it at all. Uh, it's kind of like looking at clouds and trying to make out sheep and cows. Kandinsky, the artist of this work, was actually the very first artist of all time to completely abstract artwork. So in a sense, he's the father of abstract art. Another style is called realism. Realism is quite easy to identify because basically it means that the painting looks like real life. Not necessarily a photograph of real life, but it's realistic enough that it looks like a quick moment in time. Um, and often with realism, the colors can be um, dull and gray and brown and realistic like real life. Uh, especially if you're in Canada and perhaps if it's winter, if you look outside, you'll notice that the colors are, um, are gray and dull and yeah, a lot of artists choose not to paint that way. They want to actually put in color and make, make reality more than what it really is. But in realism, it was really about showing reality as it is. Photorealism um, by artists such as Richard Estes, who you can actually look up his personal website, means that the artist has painted reality so precisely that it looks like a photo. So believe it or not, this is not a photograph. This is an oil painting. It's hard to believe because it's amazing, but uh, this is a photorealistic painting. Surrealism, such as by this artist, Salvador Dali, means that the art is not necessarily abstracted in a severe way. You can still very much see what you're, uh, see what you're looking at, but there has been a juxtaposition of objects that usually wouldn't be put together, and this creates a dreamlike state. So, for example, we're in a landscape, but we have melted clocks draped and, and sort of lying over a table. And then we have um, these ants and a fly. And it's just very confusing. What are we looking at? It's, it's not something easy identifiable. Minimalism is when the art is extremely simple. It doesn't mean that the artist drew a simple drawing in the sense that there's only a use of a few lines, but it really means that the lines themselves and the color themselves are extremely simple. So for example, this work by Mondrian, he's used black line and he's only used black, white, and the primary colors. The primary colors are the three main colors, which are red, blue, and yellow. Here's another minimalistic work. It is three stripes. Um, the, 
the name of this work is Voice of Fire and is actually located in the National Gallery in Ottawa for anyone who would like to see it. But again, very minimalistic, very simple, very limited use of line and color. This work would also be considered minim min minimalistic, sorry, hard word to say sometimes. But in this work, the artist Damien Hurst has used quite a few colors, yet the work really still is just mm, a canvas of dots and uh, still quite easy to, to put in that minimalistic style. Painting does not have to be done in conventional ways, as Yves Klein has shown us. He loved to swirl and dip women, naked women, into his own special brand of blue paint and then push them up against blank canvases, basically using them as human stamps. And um, we all know stamping. I'm sure you've used stamps or even made them your own stamps out of potatoes. Um, but this is a whole new twist on that stamping. And uh, yeah, definitely something that, uh, I don't know, a, a new way of looking at, at the art, the artist paintbrush. A quick look at a Canadian artist of, for which I have a, a great deal of respect. Norval Morisot is an Ojibwe painter who was uh, came from both a, a sort of traditional First Nations background, and his grandmother was a shaman, but he also had some Catholic background in him. So very complex religious um, story to his life. And Morisot really liked to paint about his spirituality and the spirituality of being an Ojibwe Canadian and we are going to watch a short video after this just to hear in his own words how, how his paintings work and what they're about. I'm going to be placing on, on Survey Monkey six themes of which you can choose from and depending on how you vote, this is a democratic process, this will become the theme for our final art project. So the, the six themes are expressions, four, untold stories, urban life, the unknown and moments. And when you think about choosing a, a subject, a topic, um, I would ask that you try and think of, find one that you believe gives a wide variety of interpretation so that we get an interesting original range of works from everybody. So for example, fall, um, you could think of it as fall and a lot of autumn, which would be the time of the year when the leaves are falling and lots of oranges and yellows and and reds. Or you could think of it in a religious way, perhaps the fall of Adam and Eve. Or m most religions have some idea of sort of the fall of, of humankind. Um, another thing is fall could be falling in love. It could be falling down. It could be falling over. So, you know, really think about these ideas and make your decision based on that.